Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 1799. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. I feel that there is a power which is defending me and protecting me from the blows of the enemy. It guards and defends me. I feel it very distinctly. It is as if I am being shielded by the shadow of his wings. My Jesus, you alone are good. Even if my heart were to make every effort to write of your goodness, at least in part, I could not do so. This is beyond all our comprehension. One day during Holy Mass, the Lord gave me a deeper knowledge of His holiness and His majesty, and at the same time I saw my own misery. This knowledge made me happy, and my soul drowned itself completely in His mercy. I felt enormously happy. On the following day I had a clear awareness of the following words. You see, God is so holy, and you are sinful. Do not approach him, and go to confession every day. And indeed, whatever I thought of seemed to me to be a sin. But I did not omit going to Holy Communion, and I resolved to go to confession at the prescribed time, as I had no clear impediment. But when the day for confession came, I prepared a whole mass of those sins which I was to accuse myself of which I was to accuse myself. However, in the confessional, God allowed me to accuse myself of only two imperfections, despite my efforts to make a confession according to what I had prepared. When I left the confessional, the Lord said to me, My daughter, all those sins you intended to confess are not sins in my eyes. That is why I took away your ability to tell them. I understood that Satan, wanting to disturb my peace, has been giving me exaggerated thoughts. O Savior, how great is your goodness! One day, when I was preparing for Holy Communion, and noticed that I had nothing to offer him, I fell at his feet, calling down all his mercy upon my poor soul. May your grace, which flows down upon me from your compassionate heart, Strengthen me for the struggle and sufferings, that I may remain faithful to you. And, although I am such misery, I do not fear you, because I know your mercy well. Nothing will frighten me away from you, O God, because everything is so much less than what I know your mercy to be. I see that clearly. Here ends the sixth and last notebook. Faustina feels that there is a power that is protecting her from the blows of the evil one who hates her so much since she snatches so many souls from his grasp. She feels like she is being being shielded by the shadow of her protector's wings. Perhaps it is her guardian angel, or perhaps it is St. Michael the archangel. Faustina can't write adequately a description of Jesus' goodness. Words don't do justice to the reality. During Mass, Faustina was given an insight into Christ's holiness and his majesty and her own misery. But it didn't discourage her. Instead, she felt happy. This is true humility, accepting ourselves for who we are and relying on the Lord's strength. But then the evil one tried to discourage her by the wide gap between God's holiness and her misery. He knew he couldn't get her to fall into mortal sin, so he tried to push her in the opposite direction, toward scrupulosity, thinking that everything was a sin and that she should go to confession every day. In his instructions to Faustina at the end of her retreat, our Lord had told her, Do nothing beyond what I demand of you. Jesus was not asking Faustina to go to confession every day. This was a temptation. Jesus helped her during the confession. 
She was not able to confess anything that Jesus did not consider a sin. Satan will always try to disturb our peace in one way or another. In the last entry in her sixth notebook, Faustina writes of preparing for Holy Communion, having nothing to offer Jesus. She asked for his grace and his strength and declared that nothing would frighten her because his mercy is so much greater than everything else in the world. This is the important lesson that Faustina has learned. Tomorrow we'll begin reflecting on the last section of St. Faustina's diary on her preparation for Holy Communion.